All right, to begin this painting, uh, I'm starting out with a custom HD stencil. This one is a size four. Um, I begin with an HD stencil to, to do the mapping out of the, of the painting. And the reason is obvious, you know, there's not, there is not a better way of uh, cutting through the preparation of a painting than, you know, laying down uh, the map for the entire painting like this, uh, which uh, was a little bit challenging because of the shape of the motorcycle fairing. Uh, anything that isn't flat is always challenging to lay the stencils down. Um, but at least they bend, so it's that's uh, uh, positive about it. Uh, but uh, still, it took me about maybe half an hour to, to do the mapping out. Uh, because before pulling the trigger, I was being careful, making sure that the stencil hadn't shift a lot. So... A little bit of uh, misalignment, I, I would tolerate it on this painting. But if it was more misaligned, it would have been a big issue. Uh, it wouldn't have worked. So uh, this fairing has a, a body line there that creates a compound curve. And um, I'm working slowly all throughout that area, you know, making sure the stencil is you know, in place, align, and, and and these stencils need to be flush with the surface or else it's not gonna work. So uh, that's why you, you see me pushing down uh, and spraying little by little, sort of uh, puzzling it together, you know, like piecing it together. Um, that is, you know, all that I'm doing and it's challenging because it's it's a very large stencil and and there are a lot, a lot of lines that need to match up so um that's why I'm going slowly and making sure you know this is the foundation of the painting so making sure that I got a good one and um uh, for that part down there I decided to completely remove the stencil which uh, it's it's uh, tough to Put it back to get uh, put it back again in place, but if you can see on the top uh, left corner of the stencil, there's overspray there. So I use that overspray to line up the stencil, and I I remove the tape from the top to be able to hold the stencil down there, and all of this you know is I'm doing it by eye. I'm trying to line it up as best as I can. Um, even though that area is gonna be dark afterwards, uh, I still want to have some detail there. And this is the results that I got from the HD stencil. Uh, from here, um, I'm all set to start building up the shadows and highlights on this painting. All right, so now that uh, the you know the freehand part begins uh, at first in the in the paintings I tend to feel you know a little bit uh, lost in the painting so I always look for a dark area that I can anchor myself you know spend some time there for a few minutes till I get my mind into the painting and um, I'm using this railing on this stage coach to to you know to go full black there and test how the surface is working out uh, because I do have a special surface here I'm not painting on top of a regular uh, base um, I, I have a white base on this fairing and then I clear coated it with SSR clear so that I'm able to uh, to paint on top of that clear and then use my erasing and paint removal techniques. And as you can see, this time I'm not using deep paints or brushes to do these lines. I'm going straight for the airbrush. And you know, that's the advantage I have when when I'm using the, you know, when I prepare my own surface like that. So uh, that is an advantage I have on this on this painting. Uh, I'm on my comfort zone. This is more like a technique that I'm more familiar with. 
so I'm able to create really crisp edges and really uh, you know clean lines and all around whatever I need to so uh, as you can see there on the screen there there is the there's the reference picture and I also um, I'm also looking constantly at that picture I'm not doing this out of my mind um, because you know that's that's not the kind of work I do I always work from a reference picture so uh, it helps helps me to you know to understand what I'm doing so that is an example of how you can create crisp lines you know freehand you will need to have erasing techniques combined with freehand but that's how I do mine and now to keep you know carving out this painting I like you know figuratively I I say it like that um, when I'm painting I, I look especially if I'm doing black and white like like this case uh, I see it as I'm carving out and I start with the deepest part of the painting which is the almost full black in the video it might seem like I'm going full black in some areas and some some areas I am but because of the glare this this uh, this fairing is at an angle because of the glare you're not able to see all the depth and the textures underneath the those really dark areas but uh, you know skip to the end if you want to see the end results and so you can understand why I'm doing some things now that are not visible you know because of the lighting but uh, it will make sense why I did it so uh, I'm building textures there in the dark area right now it's not visible but it is there and it will be visible once it's clear coated so uh, you know I just at this point I just keep moving along the, the dark edge uh, the dark places on the picture and it all those little areas serve me as an anchor you know so I don't get lost when whenever you're doing something very detailed you know you need uh, some chunks of the painting done to be able to keep moving or else whenever you're doing something very detailed you get completely overwhelmed by how much left you got to do so because of that I focus on small areas uh, you know I look for one line I follow that line that line you know keeps connecting to the next one and and like that little by little you start spreading out and that's one of the hardest thing on a when you first start uh, a painting is you know is those first things that look like nothing at first um, so throughout this first part of you know what I'm doing right now I'm I'm mostly looking for the dusk, darker parts of this painting and um, at the same time on some really dark areas I'm throwing some some uh, texture and if you have noticed uh, I erase and then I come back with paint uh, that's because I, when I do scratching techniques I don't just leave a bare white you know like here for example you see I, I, I didn't go full black there I did some shading and then I come do some erasing and in a moment I'll come back with some paint and bury some of those details so so the dark area becomes even darker whatever whatever paint is there left uh, it becomes darker and whatever is white you know uh, gets a bit darker but still shows through a little bit so when you look at it closely you still see uh, like different layers of details and then on top of that I come back and pull out my brightest highlights so the tip there is when you remove paint you might need to come back and add more color to reduce how bright something is and the reason why I'm using so many different erasers is because uh, there's not a one tool that can do everything and that's why I'm doing multiple tools to see which one helps out and gets gets me the desired effect that I'm going for and because I'm still on the early stages of this painting uh, I'm going throughout the entire stagecoach 
uh, finding all those full black areas and again that is to use them as an anchoring point so that I don't get lost in, in this uh, bunch of details um, whenever I find something that I can shade at the same time I just go for it it's not like I uh, I restrict myself to saying okay I'll just do the black then I'll just go do the uh, the mid tones uh, in some paintings that tactic might work uh, on this one I just if I find an area that I'm that makes sense for me okay I'll just do it this way you know that's what I do um, if uh, it's not clicking yet I just keep going with the darks uh, after a while of doing darks the picture starts uh, jumping at you so it's much easier to figure it out and, and say okay now it's time for uh, mid tones Um, if you have never seen that pencil, that is not a color pencil. That is an eraser. And uh, it's an, a sanded eraser, like a sandpaper, sanded eraser. And this stick I'm using is just a, a wooden dowel, wooden stick that uh, I shaped into, you know, a fine point like a pencil. And with that, uh, I'm able to remove really crisp uh, areas. It's good for making corners and stuff like that. Um, here uh, on this painting, I mostly used freehand for doing lines and things. Uh, and don't be deceived. The video makes it look as if I'm going really fast. But those lines uh, were I was going very slowly. And on the video, it also looks really big. When you, when I was painting, I, I felt like I was with my face almost to the surface. I was really close. And I'm using a Micron, uh, which is a 1.8, I'm, I'm sorry, uh, 0 0.18. Um, that is like the smallest needle size I have. And still, I was going very close to do some lines. Uh, at this point, another another thing is that at this point, I'm using full, almost full black paint. Uh, it's not, this color is not uh, reduced. So if I go too dark, it will immediately cover. Later on, I use a weaker transparent white, uh, transparent black to do the shading. But at this point, uh, it makes it a lot faster to use a black that is stronger. It's not uh, full black either from the bottle. It does have some reducer and some transparent base, but uh, it's not too weak either. It does cover really quick. Um, for for uh, anybody who might be a beginner and sees something like this, you know, if you see it done, uh, you might feel intimidated and you just going to wonder how something so det detailed can be done. And, uh, of course, I used the stencil and it helped a lot. It cut down the time by a lot. But the the secret, if you want to call it like that, is to do one small area at a time. There really is no other way. You know, it doesn't matter how big the project is. It, it started small, you know. It started one little area at a time. And airbrushing... Uh, it takes a lot of time, you know, if you want to create something airbrushing. Uh, you got to be willing to put on a lot of time. And that is, you know, the biggest secret you can find on almost any art medium. Um, and again, coming back to what I'm painting here. Uh, this area, you can see more of the detail I did. But again, I'm burying it. Um, erasing and coming back with paint, erasing and coming back. Um, the areas I want to leave, you know, I want to erase and not touch it back are only the areas that are full highlights. Other than that, you know, by erasing and putting more color, erasing and putting more color again, you know, that is just to create texture. And that is how texture is created. 
uh, if you are doing more more technical textures, uh, then when when uh, when you remove paint with the sticks or the erasers, then you gotta sort of draw that that shape, and that's how you create uh, textures like that um, with that technique of erasing. So for for anybody who might be watching this and is a complete uh, beginner, uh, you might want to start doing uh, simpler subjects that uh, doesn't have that something that doesn't have so so many small details uh, because uh, s something like this project can be uh, you know intimidating if you're a beginner. If you are a professional, you can tell this is this is a very simple painting in, in the terms of uh, coloring and it's basically shading. That's pretty much what it is. Um, you know, for for any of you who are beginners, um, you know the the real benefit of, of this video is for you is that you can see the entire process. I recorded this entire process uh, with that in mind to show you, you know, to demystify, to demystify whatever goes on, you know, in secret, what, how some artists do some, some of the work, you know, this is how it's done, you know, one little bit at a time. And, and uh, a lot of airbrush control, a lot of, uh, you know, the, the color being very reduced to make sure you don't go full black too quickly when you're shading. So the real benefit is that you can see this entire process. Uh, it's a little bit sped up, but th that is necessary for something this big. Uh, real time, this took about 10 hours. And uh, for any advanced artists, you know, I hope and uh, I intend to inspire you to do something, you know, to paint something if you, you know, take long breaks like all of us like to do. Sometimes we feel a little lazy to paint something, but, you know, by, by seeing a nice painting, hopefully you get inspired. And um, also see a little bit of how I do some things. All right. Uh, another tip for another tip for uh, for artists uh, still growing their techniques and skills and experience as well. Uh, I always say this, but whenever you're painting something, you will you will get impatient to see the final result. What you gotta understand is that you work in a small area at the time, and it doesn't look like anything, but the real secret, the real trick to a painting is that you just keep doing that small area uh, little by little. And after a while, when you do all those small little pieces that don't look like anything, it's going to start coming together, you know, like small puzzle, like small pieces of a puzzle. And once you have painted the entire design, it looks like what it's supposed to look like. So... You know, that's how I see it, and and that will help you out. You know, to to overcome those first minutes, those first few hours that the painting doesn't look like anything. Um, and you're gonna find out that once you start painting something, and you get to a stage that uh, the painting already looks like something, it's much easier to keep painting because you already feel like you have something built up. And I'm gonna throw something here really quick. Uh, the reason why, another reason why I like using HD stencils is because uh, I hate, you know, the the preparation that happens when when you need to trace something or project an image and do all that uh, drawing around. I like painting, but I don't like drawing at all. And you know, we have to do it sometimes for some for some jobs, but. But what I like about the stencil is that, you know, I don't need to to overthink it. 
and I can quickly go to the part that I like, which is, you know, shading and airbrushing and controlling the paint and pulling out the textures, that sort of thing. So by using the stencil, you know, I avoid the, the areas that I don't find too enjoyable. So that's a little bit of how I think. Um, and, and another thing is w once you have the, the base, once you have the uh, foundation for the drawing, for the painting, you have all the outlines or ghost image that the stencil gives or whatever, you know, you it's much easier to, to take on, on really advanced projects uh, uh, rather than, you know, going fully traditionally with pencil and, and um, graphite paper and that sort of thing. So, you know, when, when you are farther ahead in, in the painting, it really makes it a lot easier to keep going. Um, I know a lot of you airbrush artists out there know exactly what tools I'm using. Uh, but for anyone who doesn't know, uh, these are all electric erasers. And they make they make removing the paint a lot easier than than if you were just rubbing it out with uh, with a hand eraser like a pencil eraser or something like that it wouldn't be as efficient um like i said <clears throat> like I said, the the one of the benefits of this video being the entire video is that you can see the entire video to understand how it's, this part of the painting was built, that other part of the painting was built, you know. Uh, so that is one good benefit. Uh, I know I'm speaking a lot over this video. Uh, and for some people that might be useful, but... If you find it annoying, you know, you're trying to focus on the painting, you know, just feel free to remove the audio, uh, put it on mute, and, uh, you know, look at the process what I'm doing. What I'm trying to do is give, you know, a few hints, a few tips of what I do, you know, the, the thought process, which I think is very important, more than uh, almost as, as important as the techniques. Uh, when you're a beginner, you need to understand that it is tough and it takes some mental toughness. But uh, if you find it useful, listen to the audio or else, you know, just watch the video. And take what is helpful and ignore whatever doesn't help. Um, there is no... There is no trick to creating all these shapes. The only trick is, and uh, this is a technique, the, is to look at the reference picture, see what the reference picture tells you, and then you paint what you think you're, you're seeing. And that goes for airbrushing, that goes for pen pencil drawing, shading, and also for painting. So that's basically what I'm doing here. Uh, I cannot tell you, you know, to create this board, this plank of wood on this side, I do this. You know, for that, you look at the picture, and that's why the, the reference picture is, you know, right there on the screen. So you can uh, compare to, to see what I'm doing to the original picture. Uh, when you paint something yourself, uh, you're going to find that uh, that is a very personal thing. Uh, even if you had another artist with you, everybody will, will, you know, have their own different painting. Like if if you had ten airbrush artists together painting the same thing, and uh, even if they are professionals, all of them, they will have different. The each painting will look different. So, don't try to do what I'm doing, but I hope that it helps you. But you know, be be free. Be uh, feel free to to put your own spin on it. 
uh, I like to play uh, to paint a lot of realism and photorealism but if you want to do some other stuff you know feel free um, until until you find your your style what you like to do all right so in this part I'm pulling out some really uh, intricate details on this area and I'm using a, an Iwata Eclipse at this point I'm not using the the Micron the reason why is because I have two airbrushes I have one with the full black uh, for example is this uh, my full black airbrush is this uh, Eclipse airbrush and I have another airbrush with transparent uh, you know the making the the black with more transparent base and, and reducer so it's more transparent on my other airbrush so by having those two airbrushes with uh, different variations of the same color I'm able to shade and make lines almost you know almost uh, effortlessly you know without having to clean up the airbrushes and and keep mixing paint back and forth back and forth because that is just a waste of time and and nothing uh, you know will take more time than that you know nothing will take so much uh, wasted time like that than mixing your colors over and over again when you can just have two different airbrushes to you know to for the two different steps because remember what i'm doing here is i'm out outlining and and shading basically and then i'm using the erasers to pull out highlights and build texture like i've been saying so that is you know since you're not there with me you can't tell but that's what i have two two airbrushes with a, a variation of paint same color but different um, mixture Um, if anyone here, if you are still watching this after this, you know, so much time that I've been, this video is taking, uh, if you're a beginner, remember, you're not going to get a lot of detail if you're using the black straight out of the bottle, uh, because it will be too strong. You're not going to be able to create all, to create all the different gradients. So it's very important to use reduced black and when you have the whatever color you're using more reduced more weaker then it makes it a lot easier to build up your shading um, and that goes from beginners to really advanced artists uh, the more advanced an artist is the weaker paints they use uh, you're not going to find weak paints out of the bottle. What you need to weaken the paints is transparent base and reducer. By adding those, you, you don't want to only add reducer because then uh, you uh, compromise the adhesion of the paint and the durability. So you want to add the transparent base and the reducer together on the same mix so another thing I could talk about is the the fact that I I didn't use the HD stencil to fully make the picture on this on this painting, and for a shape like this fairing, I don't think the HD stencil. Um, I did a Spider-Man PlayStation, and there's a video here on YouTube. You can go check it out. Um, and I only used the stencil, and I sprayed through the stencil full intensity, and. Uh, that was, you know, that wasn't a, a very complicated project. But if I wanted to do something like that on this on this fairing, I don't think that would have been possible because of 
the shape that the that the fairing has, uh, some areas I would have been able to easily do it. But because it has uh, some uh, really sharp edges and, and compound curves and curves and all kind of stuff, um, it would have been very difficult to to do this 100% stencil because the stencil you need to spray it mo uh, with multiple passes of color so that you intensify it, so that you increase the contrast so I could have got it darker but um, probably not 100% you know black like like a painting should be, if if you want it that way. So, so yeah, just wanted to to say that in case someone, you know, the when someone uses the stencil by the, by itself without any freehand techniques, you know, it's either by choice or either because um, you're not a super advanced artist and and you know you want to get something done. You know, that is perfectly okay. Um, but uh, if you have a lot of curves and edges, then it might not work. Okay, for anyone who's still watching, First of all, thank you very much. And I want to point out that, as you can see now, after almost being halfway done through this painting, almost at the halfway mark, um, at this point, if you look at the at the picture, it's starting to look like something. Um, when when you're at the, in the middle of the painting, you know, you're already feeling f good, you know, you're feeling uh, that you have achieved something. Um, at this point, it's much easier to keep painting. You, to, you don't need any strong motivators. Right now, the motivation is, you know, you're already seeing the results. So, um, for anybody who is watching still and, and is a beginner, uh, I want to point that out for you. Once you get to to a midpoint in your painting, it's much easier to to keep painting and and you feel relaxed. You already have uh, something carved out, you know, something that already looks like whatever you're painting. In this case, this stagecoach. Um, you know, at this at this point, I relax. I feel okay. You know, I'm doing it. I'm doing it right. It's looking good. I just gotta be careful. Uh, be careful to to remember the basics, you know, to keep using weak colors, uh, taking the time, building it slowly, making sure I'm, I'm recreating the shape that I see on the picture. And that's basically it, you know. Uh, rather than, you know, rushing and 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 messing it up at this point but uh, it's much easier to take your time at this point because uh, you're already feel feeling like you have achieved something so it's a very simple, very simple formula that I use for for this painting. It's almost similar to the to the train I painted on the last video. I'm going full black first, then shading, and then pulling out highlights. That's basically it. Uh, besides doing the texture in between some areas. And. Uh, if you have any questions, be sure you leave some comments. Uh, if you find something that is helpful, you know, leave it in the comments as well. Uh, you know, it's encouraging to to find out that uh, something I said is 
you know it's helpful for you so uh, this part looks weird but all it is is the left area of the painting and I left this man on purpose I didn't start there uh, when I when I start painting I don't I don't do the entire picture you know at one level and then keep building I I start on one place that I feel okay this is easy to start with and then I move on into the more difficult areas and and this man for example is uh, I considered it uh, a bit difficult to do uh, because um, it is very small the the different parts that he has you know like the belt the bullets the hand the sleeve all that stuff um, I gotta be sure I get it right but at the same time is it's kind of difficult to do so I left it for last and and that is because at this point I'm more you know confident of what I'm doing I already got a lot of the painting done it's easier to to have context to something else that I'm doing for example this man if I paint it it already adds up to the rest of the painting uh, so that also helps you compare and understand when to you know when you are okay with this part of the painting so um, there's gonna be a, a, a full black on the edge and it's gonna fade into the picture but uh, but uh, I'm, I'm only uh, leaving it there now and I'm moving into the areas that uh, have full black on this man and if you can see, if you can notice I'm doing the same thing on this man that I did on the rest of the painting I'm doing the areas that have full black uh, because it's easy to you know create an anchor and at the same time I'm treating this man as a separate part of the painting um, you know when I'm working on this man I focus and stay there on that man and get it to a uh, to a point that looks good and if I find another area that is difficult I'll just keep it and leave it for later um, because um, you know I don't want to get entangled on on areas and start wasting my time I'd rather you know once once you have a lot of the picture done you feel like okay a lot a lot has been done i can take my time now but when you're beginning on, a, on an area of the painting you feel like if you're getting stuck you you get frustrated because you're feeling like you're wasting time and there's still a lot left to do so um there is a lot of dark areas on this part of the picture and by that i mean the reference picture so I'm not entirely understanding all the details that are in there. All I'm basically looking at is the full black, uh, the the full black, the edges, if to see if the edges are soft or if they are hard. That's what I'm looking at, and and judging more or less. Okay, this value is is almost black, you know that that sort of thing. What is pure white? What is pure black? That's what I'm doing. Uh, that's important for you to know that I'm not saying okay this is uh, the pants these are the bullets these are the sleeves that's not how I think I I see everything in terms of lightness or, or darkness um, that's uh, that that's basically it So, uh, one thing I've, I found out was that uh, this uh, wood dowel that I'm using, sometimes it doesn't work in some areas. I'm not sure, I'm not entirely sure why, but uh, I suppose that it's because the paint has cured. It's been there for, for very long. So, when I, when I use this scratching technique, I make sure the paint, uh, I'm scratching where I recently painted or else the paint becomes hard and uh, it makes it hard to remove 
and then uh, if it becomes hard and the and this stick is not doing anything it's not removing it then I gotta go back to the eraser but the disadvantage is that the eraser uh, doesn't it, it's not as easy to control like the dowel for small details All those colors that I'm using there on that airbrush are very reduced and I'm building the dark by uh, constantly going going over the same area with the same color so I, I actually do multiple passes on the same spot and that's why that's how I do the dark areas it's, uh it looks like I'm doing it in one single pass but I'm actually going back and forth, back and forth, almost like uh, when you do when you're sketching something with pencil. Um, the nice thing about this man is that it's not one of the main subjects of this painting so I don't need to go completely like the picture as long as it looks like what it is um, I'm happy with it if it was a more important part of the picture then uh, I would have to spend a lot more time to get it done so you know, uh, although it's difficult to, to do some of these uh, subtle fabric folds, uh, it's also a good place that uh, allows me to speed up the, the entire painting because it doesn't require to be entirely perfect. To, to do subtlety on a painting is much more difficult than to do, you know, really dramatic effects if you notice this painting is very dramatic it's very dark and very light um, and that's actually easier to do than than to have something that is more subtle Sometimes when I'm when I was painting this, um, I would get a little bit lost uh, because there are areas with very low light and still has some textures and stuff going on. So when I get into being lost in the picture, I only focus on to what is light, into what is dark, and which way it goes. You know, like the angle of the plank of wood or whatever. That's what I see instead of saying, okay, this is a belt or this is the leg, you know, that's, uh, if you think like that, it doesn't help in the middle of a painting. And if you get lost and you don't know what you're doing, that's the basics, you know, go back and, and think, okay, is this dark? Is this light? How, what shape it has? That sort of thing. Uh... The other thing is that some areas take longer than other parts and that is something to be expected. The folds on that shirt 
took me longer than, than expected, but once everything is put together, it looks like it's supposed to. But then you see, I didn't finish the hand on that uh, on that man, the driver of the stagecoach. Um, that is because it's it is difficult, so I left it for later, and I decided to move on into a different part of the of the painting I haven't finished yet. And um, you know, once once all these small areas uh, are filled in and finished. You know, it's another small step forward, and I can revisit the the hand later on. Uh, that hand is he's grabbing something. It's hard to tell what it is in the picture. Uh, I mean, in the reference picture, but I will go back to it later. Uh, in the meantime, I just rather jump ahead and, and move to a different part of the painting so that you know I'm constantly moving forward There is no, there is no better teacher than uh, than practicing this this kind of st stuff. You know, if you want to get better at painting, you know you gotta paint a lot. That is basically it. Uh, you know, watching videos is good. It's very helpful. I do that a lot as well. I like to learn from other artists. Um, but the best teacher there can be is actually you know grabbing the the airbrush and putting some paint down and you know ex experience it firsthand um it is very rewarding when you do a painting uh, either for yourself for a customer uh but uh you know, it, it feels good when you do something that wasn't there before. It has a special thing. Um, I think that, uh, you know, creating something, it's one of the most rewarding experiences you can have. Uh, and I'd like to share what I'm doing here, hopefully, to inspire you to to also create your your own artwork and paintings and even drawings. I know uh, something that is very helpful is to see other artists on different mediums painting. It's uh, it's very interesting to see a wide range of things that can be painted. You know, from oils to pencil and airbrushing, and it all comes down to basically the same techniques, just a different way of applying the paints. Uh, I'm sorry. It comes down to to the same uh, prin uh, principles, but different techniques to apply in the paint. You see how with the with the wooden dowel, I'm able to make those straight lines very easily because they are very fine. So using the dowel makes it very easy. Again, with the with the lighting, it's hard to see 
all the deepness of the of the painting but at the end I will show you once it's done once it has clear coat and you know um, well the other side will also have another painting and maybe by the time this video is done it's not the other side is not gonna be done so what I'll do is I'll use wa wax and grease remover and that will simulate what the clear cut looks like that gun um, very simple to paint but it was very small so it was even though it's simple it, it was a little bit uh, you know I was a little bit careful to applying paint there So I'm finally spreading out from the stagecoach and I'm going into the horse rider back there. Um, and when I did the stencil, this stencil was like an outline, but uh, I had like a ghosted effect all around. So that's what I'm cleaning up uh, before I start painting. So this part here in the in the background doesn't need to have as much detail but uh, it's a good idea to you know for me it was a good idea to do as much detail as I could even though it was going to be very challenging um, his face was about you know maybe in my fingernail I could have fitted probably two or three of his faces so that's how small that that was with an airbrush is very difficult to do that at least for me it was very difficult I don't do miniature painting but even on a confusing as it was piece of uh, painting back there I'm still hanging on the basics you know I'm hanging on the values I'm looking at dark and light, different darkness, different lightness, and I go off that. I try to find full black first so I, so I can gauge what I got. Another problem that uh, that I see sometimes is that uh, some some people leave the paintings too light. That is a common mistake. I did it a lot of times. Um, and sometimes we can still do it even after years of painting. But don't be scared of going dark. For anybody who is more advanced, uh, you would understand that th there are atmospheric uh, perspective, that some atmospheric perspective that is going on here. And you know even though I'm going full black I'm still keeping in mind that there there is some dust on the on the ground and it's you know giving that uh, smoky feeling to the bottom of this painting so that's why I don't do the entire horse full black um, for anybody who didn't understand that that is basically uh, atmospheric perspective actually reduces the contrast of um, something far away in the distance because uh, the all the dust particles in the air start you know taking away the color from that from those things in this case this man on the horse and the same I'm, I'm having the same problem on this man I get lost in some area, for example, the horse, you see, I didn't finish it. That is because I'm getting lost. So I jump into an area that I can keep moving forward. And his face was uh, something that I could anchor myself from to keep painting. Uh, if I get to a point that I'm confused and I don't know what to do, 
and, and you will get to that too. The best thing to do is to remove yourself from the painting. Just let it be, go have a coffee, you know, have lunch, have dinner, whatever, and come back, you know. Take five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, and come back to it. Um, and, you know, try painting a different part of the painting. That usually helps me to refresh my mind and come back to it. And um, I'm still working on the on that man on the background. As you can see, the the legs of, of the horse look lighter. And right now, it's hard to tell. That is the dust from the road causing it. But once, once I do the 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 ground and that stuff, you know, it, it makes more sense. And that's why you don't want to judge your painting mid uh, midway. You want to finish it because it's only until it's completely finished that everything makes sense. And with the with the sanded the eraser. Um, sort of sending out some paint uh, kind of lightening lightening the the black and creating a, a soft highlight but um, still being careful because it you cannot do the same smooth highlights as you can do with the airbrush so it helps to pull up a highlight but carefully uh, for the ground, for the road, whatever that is, uh, it's not very complicated. It's simply uh, some scratches and multiple layers of color. I do a, sp a light layer of black and come back with uh, erasers and scratching and whatever, create some texture. And I put some other layers of color on top and and keep uh, building that little by little darkening it until the value that it needs to be and that horse way in, back in the distance there as you can tell I'm just scribbling it I didn't really do much to it it's just you know some splashes of paint and that's enough you know I'm not actually painting muscles and tails and heads and everything. It's not needed. So that is the road. It's the piece of road that it's shown in the reference picture. Not exactly accurately, but enough to where I can say, okay, that looks like what I'm going after. Uh, when you're painting on jobs, you know, you don't want to go always so perfect because sometimes it's not needed. Just enough, it's good enough. Um, before I finish this, I'm doing the sky. I tried doing some clouds with a piece of napkin, but uh, quickly noticed that wasn't the look I was going after. Uh, around the blue fine line tape on the top, I'm doing a, a fade. Uh, that is to separate the sky. And when I remove that tape, you're gonna see how dark we are compared to white. Um, I will show you a much clearer video than this, so you can appreciate it in a better lighting the very subtle clouds I did there. Almost impossible to tell right now, but uh, I will show you. And that's how far from white we are, but it does look like an old movie. And um, I really loved how this first painting on this fairing has come out. So. Thank you very much for watching this video 
And remember to share this video with some other airbrush artists that you know. Remember to like this video, subscribe to this channel. You know, it's really nice to do these videos for you guys. And um, I hope you have learned something. Uh, you probably never seen the HD stencils before. Give them a try. They are really awesome stencils. There's nothing like it right now on the market. Uh, they help out on these big jobs big time. They cut down the time by a lot. And uh, thank you guys. I'll show you the next part on the next video. Let me know what you think in the comments.